Welcome back to another episode. It's just me, myself, and I this time around again. Being me being sick, of course. Um, we are doing a streamer update, becoming a streamer update type feature. Um, if you watch the previous episode or listen to the previous episode, um, we talked about the like beginning steps of what it takes and what you should be looking into if you're thinking about uh, becoming a full-time streamer or even a part-time streamer, you know, the apps, the programs you should, uh, should look into, things like scheduling, um, what platform you're going to be on, type of games, and so much more. So if you haven't listened to that, go listen to that. I'm going to link the episode down below or at least uh, the title and the episode number itself so where you guys can find it. So if you haven't, go listen to that one and then come back. That was at the beginning of April, end of March. So now we're at the end of April, beginning of May. And I figured let's do another episode diving more into the streamer side of the house. And again, this is all, uh, for lack of a better word, this is all very opinionated. This is based upon research that I have personally done by reaching out to other streamers ranging from very big time streamers who garner, you know, 30,000 plus viewers on average to the very tiny minute streamers who are just starting out and maybe have one viewer and talk about struggles and things they would advise, advise against, recommend, avoidance type of things. So keep in mind, it's all with a grain of salt and this becoming a streamer is not doing the streaming is not hard becoming an active and functioning streamer and a high quality streamer is very difficult because there's a lot of things you have to do to get there um, so anyone can just press stream and start streaming right away but it takes so much more skill talent and um and structure to actually make it so this is what we're doing with this episode we are looking at one of the most important features that you should be keeping an eye on and you will hear people like myself and others who say you know they don't look at they don't have their viewership numbers up they don't look at that type of things during the lives and i personally don't i know a lot of streamers uh, who strongly recommend against it and what i mean by that is there is a way to make it so where you physically can see how many people are watching your content as you're live how many live viewers you have and you should you should care about that to a degree but you shouldn't let it dictate your your live streams so basically what that means is if you choose to display the active viewer count on your live streams that's up to you i strongly recommend against it and it's a feature that a lot of streamers have say that they recommend not doing as well because what happens is when you're live streaming and you see that number and you see it start dipping down or you see it you know when you're starting out it will say zero and by the way side note caveat back a little bit your live stream should never have zero viewers. There should always be at least one, and that should be you. Have your stream pulled up on your phone, on a computer, on a TV, on a tablet. Have it pulled up somewhere so where you have at least one viewer. Um, this is something that's highly recommended and uh, even, I'd honestly say above recommended, people state that you need to do this and i'm one of them i'm like if you're streaming at least have your own stuff pulled up um, i have my own channel pulled up on my phone so right anytime i can listen to the audio and i can hear you know do i do i sound clear does my gameplay sound clear is my gameplay drowning out me am i drowning out my gameplay you need to be able to do on the fly um diagnosis of all this and until you get to the point where you have mods who actively participate and watch your streams to be on the fly and say, hey, this needs to be fixed. 
you kind of have to do it yourself so it's one man show now back to the point you should have at least one viewer at all time it should be you uh, but the thing with having your viewership displayed is the fact that you see that number and you see it go from like one to two to three to four to eight to twelve whatever you start seeing it grow and you're so focused on that number you're like oh my god i finally do it i need people tuning in this is awesome okay cool that's a plus side because you get hyped when you see the number grow you get hyped you hype yourself up you're like oh my god there's people fucking watching me this is amazing i love it i'm gonna keep pushing on this is great i'm entertaining people love it however the flip side of that has more impact on the streamer than anything else because if you see that number and all of a sudden let's just say you're starting out and you see five people are watching your stuff you're having a good time you see six people now you see 10 you see the number growing you're like yes perfect people are coming in and all of a sudden it just drops down to four three and then all of a sudden it's just one because that's you that instant realization of people just left your stream or not actively watching anymore honestly does a number on you mentally because you see it and you're like well shit i must have not been entertaining or they must not like me or why why aren't they watching me anymore why like you beat yourself up so much and it takes a lot of um self-realization and understanding that that's just kind of how streaming works is you're going to have people pop in pop out pop in pop out throughout your entire session and if you let those numbers get to you if you let those numbers bother you while you're live that's a problem because if you react negatively or it has negative impact on you you are going to project that very much on stream and people are gonna be like oh he's not fun to watch or she's not fun to watch because you know they're now upset they're sad whatever it may be and it's all because of a number those numbers should not play a huge factor into your into your live stream. They do need to play a factor in the overall like weekly or daily, weekly, and monthly recap. Yes, because that allows you to break down the analytics. And that is what this episode's all about, is the analytics. So small little things like that though, watching the viewership is again one of those that I've seen time and time again, I've been told numerous times. Don't display, especially when you're starting out, do not display your viewership count on live stream because it's just, it it does something to people, majority of people who look at it and they just beat themselves up when somebody leaves. So I don't recommend it. Majority of uh, streamers, big and small, don't recommend it. But you do you just understand if it starts negatively impacting your stream or impacting how you behave, turn it off worry about it another time the numbers should come second because you need to focus on creating content that draws people in and makes them want to watch and stay watching what you were doing they don't want to just be like oh he's not very interactive he's not playing something fun he's very boring or she's very boring so uh so so yeah, you like lost my train of thought. Sorry, brain fart. So analytics and the numbers is basically what I'm getting at. Like, don't be looking at this stuff while you're live streaming because it you you need to be focused on your viewerships, and your community that you're building. You need to be able to focus on them and watching chat and listening to them and interacting with them while also creating content that draws people in. I had a massive brain fart just then. It's a great thing about all this stuff being unedited is it's going to stay in. So, well, let's move on. There's more to analytics, okay? Things you need to worry about on like a, a weekly, at minimum, a weekly basis um, is your entire like recap. And whether you're streaming on like DLive, Kick, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, uh, any other platform I can't think of just you need to find the the statistical analysis of all of these some are easier to find than others because they're instantly built into the platform others like kick they don't have that feature built in yet they don't have that 
that summary, that recap, that analytics side of the house yet. So finding your kick stats is a little bit more tedious, but don't worry, I have the website that you can use um, and take it all with a grain of salt. But you need to look at these, these stats and these stats can be like, you know, your average viewer, how long people are, are watching, the average watch time, how many people are commenting, active members, new followers, new subscribers, new likes, new shares, things like that. So we're going to break that down. And there's, they're all important. All these numbers are very important. Some play bigger, uh, or some have bigger impact, there we go, than others. Some honestly are very like marginal and should not be a concern in my opinion and what I found out from talking to others seems to be the uh, consensus on all of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, step by step and we're gonna actually use my personal analytics for the last 28 to 30 days. And the reason why I say this is because at the first episode that we did a, the streamer journey is I'm telling you or I told you basically my side of the house, my side of the story, the roof, and showed you my my platforms and everything. And we started from ground zero as a full-time streamer. I already have a very small following on certain platforms. Other platforms, I have a bigger following. And we're going to be looking at those numbers and see if there's any growth. And that's, that's the big thing. We want growth. We don't want to have any type of decline. We don't want to shrink at all. We want growth. And when you're starting out, any growth is good growth. Take it at its value and don't get too upset. Don't get butt hurt at seeing very small marginal numbers. Okay. When you're starting out, it's going to be slow and it's going to be slow. Depending upon who you've asked, the average like timeline people give is six to 12 months. Your first six months is getting established and getting into the rhythm and the routine and the pattern of you know i'm live streaming i'm posting i'm recapping i'm posting i'm recapping i'm live streaming creating extra content i'm sharing i'm um, connecting with other members there's a lot to it so typically it takes about six months to a year some people do pop off and go quote viral a lot better than others and everyone's journey is different i've seen some people have massive success right like what feels like almost overnight within like a month i've seen others take their journey for five to six years before they actually popped off and it's all it's it's all on you there's a lot to it there's some things you control and a lot of things you just cannot control so what you can't control work on that and that's going to be the the stats that I'm going to talk a lot more about. Okay. So let's get into it. So we're going to start off with one of the newer platforms of the forum. We're looking primarily at Twitch, kick YouTube and Facebook. Why? Because those are the stats I personally have available right now. And those are the four platforms I am the most familiar with. So, and same with like all the people I reach out to, they're on one of these four platforms, the other, B tier, so to speak, platforms. Um, I, I couldn't find too many people who are like, yeah, I know a lot about that one. Yeah, let me give you some information. So we're going to be looking at at just those four major, what well, I would say, major platforms. So starting off with the youngest age. No, ooh, that's wrong. That's inappropriate. The youngest platform, meaning the newest, um, we're going to start with Kick, and then we're going to move over to face, uh, Facebook, YouTube, then Twitch. Okay, in that order. And that's just because uh, Twitch is kind of, not even kind of, Twitch is 100% synonymous with live streams. When people think of streamers and streaming, they think of Twitch. Majority of the time, they think of Twitch. And now, right now, we're in that middle where people are like, oh, kick, what's that? Oh yeah, I heard of that, or I've, I've heard whispers of that. And then if you say like YouTube, like, yeah, I know what YouTube, everyone knows what fucking YouTube is. Facebook gave me on the other hand, people are like, oh, okay. And that's a whole different beast in itself, and I'll do a uh, more in-depth breakdown 
of the of all four platforms uh, in a different episode explaining why you should use some and why you shouldn't use others. But let's get into it. Keep in mind things that are, that you can control that will have a massive impact on things like viewership are going to be your games. So if you are a a if you have a main game that you play we'll say 75% of the time you play one game that is your primary game and you play this game all the time with a very few exception because like it's being updated or they ran out of content for you to play through or there's a new DLC that's getting ready to hit and you've maxed out your battle pass your season your season pass whatever like it's say it's good to have at least two to three games that you play if you have a main game and that's solely because there's gonna come a point in time where you're either burnt out on the game the game has no more content for you to actually work through um, or you know you just want to break and that's fine so let's get into it that's a that's a controllable okay something that's not controlled meaning you have literally zero say on it you can have influence but you have zero say on it is who's stopping by your stream okay so there's not much you can do with that things you can do to help grow your viewership is making sure you're posting when you're live make sure you're sharing um, additional content outside of the live streams so when you're not live you're posting you know shorts and reels and tiktok videos um you're making sure that you're you know networking with other streamers whether it's watching their streams being part of communities on like discord or guild where you can reach out to other streamers and kind of just converse and network and basically say hey this is what's working for me or i'm struggling here can you help me those things are controllable and that's how you can kind of influence people stopping by again influence you cannot control who stops by Please remember that. So let's look at Kick. So Kick is still fairly new. Um, it's been around for a bit, not very long at all. I think Kick's been around for like since the pandemic, so maybe four years, three, four years. So uh, they do not have analysis on their website or on their page, and it's really annoying. So you can go to streamcharts.com and then find your channel, which is what I'm using for this episode. Stream charts, you can find like hours watch, peak viewers, average viewers, followers gain, and the airtime. All of these, not, oh, sorry, not all of these, all but one of these is controllable, and they actually have an impact on the rest of them. Right? Airtime is completely controllable because it's you choosing how long you want to stream for, meaning, if you want to stream for two hours like I do every day, that's my airtime. Two hours every day, five days a week, gives me 10 hours a week. Um, but then things like followers gain, average viewers, peak viewers, and hours watch, that is something I have little control over. Um, but statistically speaking, if I were to stream more, like stream longer hours, then in theory, I should have higher average viewers, higher peak viewers, and more hours watch. Now, typically your average viewers times your airtime should equal your hours watch. Um, sometimes this is the case, uh, but again, it's based on average. So if you only, you know, if one day you have two viewers, another day you have five, another day you have one, because you should always have at least one viewer. Another day you, you pop off and you have 50, it kind of skews everything, but you'll understand in the long run. So again, we're going to be using my stats to help break this down and hopefully make it easier to understand. So this stats that we're going to be looking at is for all of April. Um, so this is April 1st to the end of April, and this is where the stats are. And I not making excuses. I'm being very transparent about everything. I started streaming full time on all platforms at April 1st. I stream five days a week, two hours a day, with the exception on Thursdays, I do stream uh, four hours. I stream two in the morning, two at night. 
So there are certain things like that to kind of keep in consideration with these numbers. But again, just starting off as a full timer, you should keep an eye on these metrics. You should not make your entire stream about these metrics, meaning you shouldn't get so upset about, oh, I'm only at two viewers, or I'm only averaging one or whatever. Like it will happen when it happens. It's not controllable. You cannot get more people there by, you know, forcing anybody. You can help influence and help guide people there, but utterly it's ultimately, sorry, it's completely out of your control. If people want to sit through and watch, they will sit through and watch If They don't, then they don't. It's very simple. Uh, but I know a lot of streamers, big and small, who have let these numbers completely run their life and their streaming journey and they get very upset and they're they all people out at times with like why aren't more people watching this is bullshit like there's not much you can do okay control the controllable and don't stress so much about the uncontrollables okay things will happen when they happen and you just have to have patience with all this so let's look at my metrics for kick using streamtrucks.com going to my kick channel it shows for the month of april I am up 21 hours on airtime, meaning I'm averaging technically one and a half hours per day. Um, and that is based upon the fact of I did a couple, I did one stream where it was only an hour and we lost connectivity. I did another stream where it was only 30 minutes because then all of the systems crash and it tells like, I can see my stats on it. I can compare it to what happened those days. So there's, things to kind of help with that. Um, and this would include like, if I get disconnected from kick, then it's just, I, I don't know about it until later on because I'm not streaming to just kick. I'm streaming to multiple platforms at one time. So I don't instantly get alerted when I'm disconnected unless I'm disconnected from my uh, restream channel, which is what allows me to stream on multiple platforms. So I'm up 21 hours. Uh, my hours watch, this month for April is 44 hours. My peak viewers were three and my average viewers were two. Um, and I gained about 17 followers since the beginning of the month. So very good. Um, starting off, this is about pretty normal, I would say. Um, looking at other and looking at my original journey to full-time streaming years ago, it's on par with just starting out. So, uh, I started out with 16 followers. I'm up 17, so I'm at 33 followers. Um, so not bad. Again, I'm not dedicated. And controlling the controllables, one other thing that will help influence like who's stopping by, and this is kind of why my journey is going to be a lot different than most, I'm a variety streamer, so I don't just play one game or I just don't have a mix of like two or three games. I play a slew of games and using this website, Stream Charts, I can see all the games I played this month and I can tell you there is a slew of games. I basically have 18 different games I played this month over uh, roughly 25 days. So I've played Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, I've played Apex Legends, I've played Kingdom Hearts, played Halo Infinite, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge, I have played Splitgate, I have played Overwatch 2, I have played Stardew Valley. So I and there's more. So I'm seeing I'm able to see what games I'm playing. So my my journey, statistically speaking, is going to be a little bit rougher and longer to get to the point because I'm not sticking to just one game and saying this game is all I'm going to play like Call of Duty. If I were to play Call of Duty every day and every stream and I got really good at it, I would in theory draw more people in on average basis because more people are watching Call of Duty than say Splitgate or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge or Stardew Valley. And there's websites you can go out there for each platform to see how how much or how many viewers versus streamers there are in that channel or that plat uh, category being the game you play call of duty typically there's going to be a lot more streamers than there are um, watchers 
but then say like for example halo infinite on average there was more viewers than there were streamers so i would have a greater chance of having a higher viewership on say halo infinite because i'm competing against less streamers than viewers whereas if i'm playing call of duty there is significantly more streamers i'm having to compete against for a smaller viewership count so one way to kind of pick a game that you could do i do see people do this quite often is they will pick a game sorry they will go research a game and they'll pick like stardew valley for example where maybe it's a three to one ratio there's three viewers per streamer or sorry more realistically there's one and a half viewers per streamer so playing stardew valley you have a better chance of garnering views than you would if you were playing on call of duty where there's virtually two streamers per viewer so one viewer per st two streamers so it you're competing a lot harder so something to consider and that is again that's a controllable that's something you can actively choose to do to help influence the viewership number and the peak viewers but again if you produce one thing to kind of keep in mind in all this because all this means jack shit if you produce poor content, if you are not talking, if you are not chatting, if you are not recognizing, interacting, and participating in your own community, if you are simply just playing the game and nothing else, you are going to struggle so hard because people will hop in and they will see, oh, they're not talking. Well, I'll hang out for a little bit. Okay, well, they haven't said anything. They're just more focused on the game. Cool. You need to work on that. And one way you can work on that is, you know, you're going to have to learn to talk to yourself. Tell a story, review the game, talk about what's happening, play by play action. Whatever helps you to talk and make it appear as though you're actively participating in your own community because otherwise people will chime in. And if you're not talking, they don't want to stick around. Another thing you can do that's kind of helps influence is acknowledging and we talked about this in the previous episode acknowledge your viewers who want to be uh who are there watching you if somebody is lurking and they're not saying anything cool if somebody there's bots and and extensions you can use that will alert you when somebody pops into your to your channel for the first time and it can alert you say new new viewer you can say hey welcome to the channel if you want to talk welcome to it. otherwise sit back and enjoy if somebody drops you a follow or like or subscribe recognize it acknowledge it thank them for it especially if it's like they're paying money to your channel you better fucking be thanking them don't be a piece of shit um consensus so but let's get back on it I, i'm gonna go on a tangent we're gonna try to keep this episode kind of short so back to it. if you can research what game has more viewers per streamers and kind of pick out if that's a game you enjoy or you could play. Again, you just for kick right now. My average viewership on kick was two. Um, there was some days I had an average viewer viewership of three. There were some days I had an average viewership of just one. Um, and again, one of the control controls that controllables that you can like help influence all this is trying to find the peak time for your game also to stream. So again, I'm having to go with what I have available, which is six o'clock in the morning to about eight o'clock in the morning um, because my kids are in school. So that is a good time for me to get up and stream. Now, there may not be a lot of people up and watching and that's fine. Again, my journey is going to be different than yours. Whereas like Thursday nights, those tend to be where I have my peak viewers and my highest average viewers because I stream further at night when it's typically nighttime for the US afternoon or sorry, evening slash uh, early night in the U.S. and then it's typically early morning elsewhere. So that tends to be a good time. I have noticed for my channel, for my content, these are things you can look into. These are things you can research. These are things that you can control. Okay. So think about it. my peak viewer was three and my hours watch was 44. So your air time time, your air time. So how many hours you stream this month? times the average viewers should equal your watch hours roughly. Uh, mine is about two hours more watch than airtime and that's that's fine, that's good. 
that's progress because a month ago my average viewer was one because I wasn't consistent. This is what a schedule has done. It's a very small growth, but it's a growth nonetheless. Okay. Um, with streamer or stream charts, I can see everything the average average watch per day, hours watch per day. There we go. Average viewers per day, airtime per day. I can see how many followers I've gained, which is 17. I started with 16 at the start of April 1st. I gained 17, so now I'm at 33. Um, doesn't tell me about anyone I've lost. And stream charts again has a paid version and a free version. I don't think you need to pay for this just yet. Uh, but it does it does a little bit more of a breakdown too, where I can see like popular games. And for me, the most popular game I have is Overwatch, where I average 45 on kick. Okay. And it tells me the full breakdown of each game. And gives me a pie chart um, call of duty does really well on thursday nights but overwatch during the morning does the best i can see all these breakdowns very easily and these are numbers you should concern yourself with but these numbers are not a make or break issue yet for you okay when you're starting out these are numbers you need to keep an eye on you need to recognize and use them okay because this is a good way to see oh maybe streaming at six o'clock isn't prime for my video games maybe i need to try to stream at like 11 o'clock seven o'clock at night you you can use these stats to reconfigure your streaming journey and figure out what you need to do to help better the numbers okay but again it's not guaranteed even though if you know one thursday you pop off you have an average viewer of 20 or 50 or a thousand or ten thousand whatever it doesn't guarantee that next Thursday is going to be the same because again, if you don't produce good content, you will not retain followers and viewerships. Okay. Again, this is just for kick. All right. So let's move on and let's look at Facebook. Okay. I, the reason why I'm choosing all four of these platforms is where you guys can kind of see, um, maybe what's more prominent. Maybe this will help you decide, Oh, I want to be a variety streamer as well. I'm going to do, this channel i want to go do twitch i want to do facebook i want to do youtube i want to do kick i want to go d live you want to just stream on discord you want to create your own website and stream there this is all something you can do and hopefully you get some um, information that's helpful from this to help determine that so let's go facebook is a little bit um more tricky i guess because this will tell me uh, post reach post engagement, new page likes, new followers, um, and interactions with my entire uh, channel slash page. So that is definitely something like kind of be aware of uh, because Facebook is going to also include all my reels and it's going to include um, additional content, okay? Because Facebook is not, of course, a place you just stream. It's a social media platform, just like TikTok and Instagram, where I can post additional content. But this is something to kind of think about because I'm posting content every day of the bloody week. I do mean that. <laughs> you can ask Roggle. I post a lot of content. You should try on average five to eight pieces of content material every day. Uh, if you can't do like that's supposedly like prime numbers if you can't try for at least one piece of content every day and grow upon that i use again i use eclipse.gg to uh configure my live streams into clips and highlights and key moments and then i create those into tiktoks and reels and shorts and i upload them manually through eclipse so where i or auto post them through eclipse so where I can then get more viewers because again, this is something I can control. I can control what content I put out there. And if people like the content they see in the short format, they are likely to redirect to come back and watch a live stream. So keep that in mind. Facebook is a social media platform first and streaming platform second. So, well, probably third Facebook marketplace probably out does the streaming, but so the numbers, for Facebook in the last 28 days is my posts have been seen by 773 people. Okay. So we're going to 
do numbers because they're not giving me the average the average with this stat so we're gonna take 773 divided by 28 days which gives me the average daily interaction of 27 and a half people um so that's how many like that's how many people are getting their eyes on my content but if you were to take the post engagements which i'm having 140 people either like comment share um, they're doing something to the post or the live stream I'm getting 140 in the month, which averages about five interaction, five, um, five daily interactions. And then in the last month, I've had somebody who actually liked my page, not the content, the page itself. And I've gained one new follower. Facebook to me is very hard to grow on. Um, when they first switched and they bought Mixer out, it blew up for a little bit, but I don't see them. I don't I, I don't think you should start with Facebook at all. I, I really don't. This is one of those like you have to dedicate everything to in order to properly grow on Facebook. Again, that's just my opinion. That is just what I think. Okay. So but the nice thing with Facebook is you can integrate your Twitch account or not Twitch. You can integrate your Instagram account. Okay. And that gives you a more broad reach of um, your entire account. So if I want to look just for like content, we're going to do the sidestep of this. Okay. Facebook lives. Let's see if I can see the results. All right. So Facebook live, I average six viewers per live stream. I've streamed a total of 24 hours this month and I've had over a thousand hours watched. So, that's not math in their Facebook anyways, but if I wanted to see like Instagram and I want to see how my contents work, like my reels I'm posting up there, I can tell you in the last 28 days, I have reached over 16,000 accounts. I have had 366 content interactions, and this would be like the number of people who like or react, save comment, shares or reply including ads, um, I've gained over 45 followers and I've had five link click throughs. My link click throughs though, my links are like for YouTube and my merch shop and for two guys, one game pad. So, but this is like, this is metrics you need to look at and need to consider. And again, regardless of what platform you stream on, you need to post content on Kick or sorry, not you need to post content on Instagram, use the reels, you need to post on YouTube shorts, you need to post on TikTok while it's still active here in the US. You need to post content outside of your stream to help bring them all in. Okay, it's very, very important to do that. Um, so please keep that in mind again. This is all this, this is just my content, this is my stuff. Okay, I, I lost what I was gonna say so. But Facebook doesn't do as well for me as others. Instagram pops off for my short content. So anything under two minutes pops off over there. I'm doing really well over on Instagram, but I'm not live on Instagram, even though I could be. So but let's move on. Facebook, not too bad. Again, five daily interactions is my average, but I'm reaching about 26 people every day or 26 channels every pages at 26 people every day. I had it right the first time. I had over 131 interactions. I've had a dozen shares, a couple click throughs. So Facebook so so. Uh, this one though, I if you do multi stream, I would highly recommend. No, regardless of what you do, you need to create a Facebook page and post your highlights, your moments, your uh, insta kills, whatever you want to call it. Anything under three minutes or minute and a half, technically, sorry, needs to go up on YouTube shorts. If it's underneath a minute, TikTok lets you up to 10 minutes. Facebook and real uh, Instagram reels are a minute and a half. You need to post your content elsewhere. And on that content, you need to have it redirect you. Okay. So get a Facebook page up, get a Twitter account or X account set up, get Instagram set up, get a YouTube channel set up, get 
if you stream, you need to be set up everywhere, hopefully underneath the same handle, and any content you create, you need to have a redirect. So if you were to watch one of my shorts or my reels or my TikToks on the video itself, is it has my handle. So it says Cybermark Sig, and then it has the logos for Kick, Facebook, YouTube, and Kick. And then in the uh, description section, it says it always has something about like live Monday through Fridays on my profile. It tells them when I'm live. It has redirect links. Um, on the content itself, it points people where this is from or what live stream it was from. And I always use content from my live stream. Uh, and then I post random stuff too. So, but you need to stream, create content from that stream, post that elsewhere and have some type of redirect back to your lives. And this is why a schedule is very important. So where you can do stuff like that more easily. So let's move on. We're going to look at YouTube next. YouTube and well, do I want to do YouTube? We're going to say YouTube for last because it had the highest numbers. <laughs> I know I said we were going to do kick Facebook, YouTube and Twitch, but I just saw YouTube's number. So we're going to just skip YouTube for a second and we'll come back to it. Uh, for Twitch though, I have an average viewership of six people per stream. I've had uh, zero subscriptions, which is fine. I have made 72 cents off of just ads. I have gained seven new followers this month. I have streamed a total of 44 and a half hours. Um, so what else data can I get from this? Let's see, followers, subscriptions, revenue, time stream, minutes, watch. Amount of like, I've had 110 plus people like my channel or yeah, like my Twitch channel. Uh, and for Twitch, it's literally on your dashboard that you can see all this. I need analytics. And this is very helpful because you can see like your max viewers. The max amount of viewers I had at one time was 31. Uh, that looks like it was, let's see if I can find what game that was on. That was just a few days ago. So let me pull up that. That was on when Tuesday. All right. So that was me playing Overwatch. So I had 30 plus people watching me play Overwatch. Uh, whether or not they were chatting or not, not too much of a concern for me. Because uh, I know there are people who just pull this up and just watch to watch. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, like, I can see clips created. I've created over 200 clips. Um, you can post your clips, too, up on Twitch. I don't know if that's for everyone or just... Um, People who are affiliate, I'm not sure on that one, so I can't give you direct ones. Uh, but while you're on Twitch, you can also research the games. Like you can research the category, whether IRL, a uh, certain game, and it will also tell you like what time to stream. So last game I streamed was Stardew Valley. Uh, Stardew Valley has 6.2 thousand viewers right now, um, and 106 or 1.6 million followers but it's telling me at a glance, the best time to stream Stardew Valley is actually 6 a.m. Yeah, because it says the average viewers per channel is 18 and a half. Um, at 6 a.m. in the morning, there's roughly 2.1 thousand viewers, but only 116 channels. So if I wanted to play Stardew Valley more consistently early in the morning, I am more likely to get more viewers. Um, but let's take like a bigger game. Let's take Call of Duty. At 5 a.m., that tends to be peak time. Um, but overall, hold on, let's back up. The average overall, like day to day for Stardew is 13 and a half viewers. Started or day to day, okay? So regardless of when you stream, you should, uh, in theory, be averaging about 13 and a half viewers every time you stream Stardew Valley. Take Call of Duty, the average day to day is five and a half big ass game compared to uh, stardew start uh, call of duty has 7.4 thousand viewers and only 750 thousand followers uh, but at again the peak hour to stream is five and six o'clock 5 a.m in the morning central time of course is what's considered peak for call of duty and it says i should average eight and a half viewers 
um, because the average viewer on it at 5 a.m. is 2.8 thousand, but the average channel is 324. So there's 324 channels live streaming this and about 2.8 thousand people watching. Then we're going to go to the game I've been playing a lot of, which is Overwatch. Average for the daily is 8.3 viewers. Um, the best time to kind of stream Overwatch is actually at 8 a.m. So just after my stream ends. Uh, but anyways, average viewers at 8 a.m. Um, is 12.4 per channel. Average viewers total is 5.6 thousand. And then there's normally 400 or there's an average of 450 channels also streaming this. So it it's very good to tell you when you should stream and it breaks this down again on Twitch dashboard. You can break it down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. See what day is better for what game, what day is better for when you should stream and you can build your schedule about around all this. And this is a controllable. So keep that in mind. This is something you can control. Uh, but my average stream duration is 2.4 hours on Twitch. Uh, so it's, I do, I do what I think is okay on Twitch. Um, I average 10 engaged viewers. So this is people who are, uh, talking and chatting with me. So 10 per stream. So it's very helpful to see all this information and be able to use it to further my, my growth on Twitch or any channel. And you can find this type of information by either Googling or doing the research yourself. Twitch makes it very easy because you can literally just look at the game and it tells you the average viewers, the average channels and the uh, browsing population of it. Mean people who like who's actually watching all this. So there's a lot of information you can get from Twitch's dashboard. Really looking at the numbers and stats. While Twitch has been around, I'm not going to say the longest so YouTube technically been around the longest, but streaming wise, which has been around and been the most successful at it. Um, so Twitch, you can definitely grow. And because they have all these tools and resources that you can use and help you further understand things better and further research ways to grow properly on here. Um, most people do start off on Twitch, not because of that reason, but that reason does tend to help a lot because again, if I want to go research a game like just just for example, if I want to research a, a game that I'm considering, let's say I am thinking about, I don't know, uh, Skull and Bones. I can go and research Skull and Bones and this tells me there's 86 viewers, but 38.4 followers. And if I want to say, OK, well, what's like when's a good time to stream Skull and Bones? According to this, Monday at 11 a.m. is one of these better times because you're going to average about six and a half viewers. If you want to look at like what day of the week does the best, you can see the average on that. This is why so many people will recommend starting off on Twitch because you can you can see all this stuff more easily. Kick, you don't have this capability yet. Kick is growing very, very exponentially fast, and I'm sure we'll have all this set up real soon. But in the meantime, to find out all this type of stats, you do have to go elsewhere and know what you're looking for. Stream charts is a good one to figure this out. Uh, so if you're going to stream on Twitch, you have research. And hell, even if you're not streaming on Twitch, create a Twitch account and again, take it with a grain of salt. It's actually still a good way to research. OK, well, I want to play Call of Duty. What day of the week is best time to or is the best day to stream Call of Duty? Again, each platform will be slightly different. Some a platform like Kick, Call of Duty may be harder to catch on, but Facebook may be easier. Twitch may be average like it. You can use things like this to to further research information that you need to make a more educated decision uh, but with twitch you have the analytics you have your overviews you have your stream summary and you can change every aspect from that you need to not from sorry there we go uh, so it's definitely definitely possible to 
to let these numbers take control of your stream. And again, you should have some concern about these numbers, regardless of which platform you're on, but these numbers should not make or break you at the end of the day. Okay. This is something you should be learning from. This is something you should be reaching and understanding and researching and understanding and going, okay, cool. Maybe streaming Monday to Friday is not my best idea. I'm not averaging very well. What happened if I did three days a week or what happened if I change up Saturday, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, there we go. Or what happened if I just changed my time? These are things that you need to research and take into consideration when creating your schedule and you do need a streaming schedule. A, a, a very minimum, you need to have a bare minimum schedule. If it's, hey guys, I am guaranteed to stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday for two hours, noon to two. Cool. Um, if you're like me, I have my set schedule. I also posted on social media that said these are my set schedules. However, I still plan to do uh, midday streams or evening streams. And if I do, they aren't necessarily announced ahead of time because there's external factors that I have to take care of first. Okay. So but enough about Twitch. Let's, let's move on. This episode's already getting super long. It wasn't supposed to, so I do apologize. So wrapping up, we're going to go to YouTube. And the reason why I saved this for last is not only because it had the higher numbers and everything, but this is a platform, um, that I finished off my live stream, my full time, not live stream. There we go. My full time, I left Twitch and went to YouTube or actually left Twitch, went to Facebook, Facebook back to, or to Mixer, then Mixer got bought out and went to Twitch and back and then over to YouTube. Anyways, neither here nor there. YouTube also has research capabilities uh, for like top searches. It also has your audience. It has the content and it has the overview of everything. This is something that is important because similar to Facebook, you can, you can do so much more than just go live on YouTube, which is kind of what I think Twitch's downfalls are going to be. Um, Twitch will be for around, around for a very long time. But one of the bigger downsides that I see that people complain about on a regular basis is you, in order to grow on Twitch, you have to grow outside of Twitch. So to get seen on Twitch, you have to be seen on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, kick anywhere else. Well, not kick, sorry. You have to be found somewhere else and bring them into Twitch. Twitch's discoverability is very weird and stupid at times uh, because it's very niche to just streaming. YouTube and Facebook have that social media aspect of it now. Uh, Facebook's always had social media. Don't get me wrong. YouTube has, now you have your community that you can actually post content up there. There's like text, which is kind of like Twitter or Facebook posts. YouTube has YouTube shorts. So now these are your short content, anything underneath the minute. Then you can upload long form form, uh, long formatted content, anything over a minute, but not a live stream. This could be like your, let me take a live stream and chop it up into rounds or into matches or into segments. And then you can post that all up there so you're getting seen even more. And then you have your live stream. So there's a plethora of things you can do to be seen and redirect you to YouTube without having to leave YouTube. But at the same time, if you want to grow, you still should be growing outside of YouTube as well. Again, you see that you... Do you get this theme yet? To grow, you need to be growing everywhere. You can't just stay within one platform. The only way that is even kind of, sort of, somewhat maybe feasible would be Facebook. That's because Facebook has a social media aspect of it, and it's meta, meaning meta has Facebook, Instagram, and threads, which is Twitter and social media, basically. And yes, I understand Twitter is social media, but... Uh, so you can go live on Facebook and then post your content up on Facebook, but also share your reels over on, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Oh, you just want to make a, a text post. That's where threats come into play. So you have all these platforms. Facebook should be doing so much better than they are. Like they should be, they should be destroying the competition, but they're not because they don't give a shit about the streamer community. Just saying what based upon the facts I read. But anyways, back to the analytics of this. So looking at YouTube, 
because you can do your long format, you can do your short formats, you can do live streams and you can post on your communities. You have a lot of numbers you can look at and we're going to stick to just, just the live streams. Okay. And the next thing is your live streams. When you're done streaming, get uploaded as, uh, videos on demand, which means it's a long formatted content, which means it gets to be viewed again. So I get two different metrics for the same video. I get my live metrics and I get my uh, content metric, meaning it's it's been uploaded as content. So well, let's dive into this. So in the past 28 days, I have had 58.9 thousand views on YouTube. I have had a watch time of 362.7 hours and I have gained 22 subscribers again, just off my my long stream formats or my live stream formats. Sorry. If you include everything, my views are closer to about 98, 99. Well, let me find it again. I just had it 99.7. So just under a thousand K uh, when you include long form and short content, watch time goes up to 641 and my subscriber jumps up to 31. So I've, gain the most followers i've had the most watch time i've had the most views on youtube because of lives and shorts and all that so when considering this type of stuff you want to pay attention to this because it lets you know and you can see day to day like if i want to look at what was yesterday the 20 all right so let's not look at that i wasn't streaming so let's go stop it so on Friday during my live stream, I had 1,245 people show up. I definitely know not that many people chatted. I think I had probably two or three and that's fine. But I had that many viewers pop in on Friday's stream at six o'clock in the morning. Middle of the day stream, my bad. Friday I streamed in the middle of the day. Uh, so that's amazing. That's phenomenal. In my opinion, I've had people who it's barely anything. I've also had four followers or subscribers. Subscribing is free on YouTube. But seeing all this makes it very easy to be like, okay, well, I'm, I'm growing positive. I'm growing, I'm growing. Okay, cool. You can go to your content side of the house and see where people are finding your live streams, where people are finding your content, where people are finding your channel. And for me, most of it comes from shorts feeds. Um, and then externally is coming from through, coming through, click through links. So on like Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. Um, I'm also being suggested on videos. So other people watching or people watching other people's videos are being suggested back to mine. I can see all my top shorts. I can see all my top lives. I can see what people are saying and the audience and the target audience I'm reaching out and my demographics. All of this is very, very important when building your channel. Again, not a make or break early on when you get a lot bigger and you're growing exponentially, yes, this is when you need to sit down and have a a weekly, if not daily, I would say weekly even then, the weekly meeting with yourself, maybe your mods, be like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, this is my plan, this is how I need to get there, this is the content I need to post, and it's going to help you grow. And then kind of like Twitch's discovery and research, YouTube also have it, and it, let's say you wanna research, uh, let's just research Warzone. So we research Warzone 2. It will tell you the top searches on YouTube via Warzone 2. This is a good way to like, this is what you should be adding into your descriptions, into your titles, into your hashtags. So the top three right now is Call of Duty Warzone Mobile, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2.0, Call of Duty Warzone Gameplay. You come here and you put those three as a hashtag or tag and you should be seeing growth fairly quickly just by or not quickly sorry you should be seeing growth uh on a daily basis if you start using that you can see what type of content people are looking for when they're like if you just search video games it will say based upon the content you produce this is what people are searching and so it's helping you grow and they always have ways for you to grow on youtube it gives you analytics it gives you your updates it gives you your latest comments it gives you ideas how to become partner, how to get discovered quicker. You have creator insight, you have news. YouTube has it figured out or is figuring it all out 
very well and they are putting a lot of money and dedication into the live aspect so for me if you're choosing a platform i would start off honestly considering between twitch and youtube leaning a little bit more towards youtube solely because you have um, everything in one spot so you can post your shorts up there you can post com uh community threat text up there you can post live streams you can post long form more long formatted content god damn and it's all in one location for them to bring back so definitely something to consider but analytics are very important to the overall growth of your channel and it's again it should be taken serious but early on it's something to help you grow pivot and fix and realign yourself to stand a better chance to grow and again everybody's streaming journey is going to be drastically different if you're a multi-streamer and a variety streamer it's going to be drastically different than somebody who's streaming just on twitch or somebody who streams just one video game so don't compare yourself to likes like nick Merckx or anybody in phase or tim the tap man or pokimane or amareth or dr disrespect or ninja you're not there yet and those are very unique people who have grown by their own uniqueness to get to where they are now don't replicate, don't imitate, but definitely look at what they're doing and incorporate some of it to whatever works the best for you and your stream. Again, everyone's different. I'm gonna have a different streaming journey than you, than Roggle, than anyone else, and that's fine. Don't let the numbers get you down, but take the numbers into consideration, focus and un understand what they mean and research yourself. So. I do this on a weekly basis and then at the end of the month I look at all of them and I export everything to a spreadsheet and that's when I start deciding okay what games do I need to lay off a little bit what games do I need to incorporate um, then I start researching what games I want to play so for example if I want to play one of the Madden games I'm going to research playing Madden for May I'm going to see okay what day of the week works best for that and what gives me the best opportunity to grow for like tags and hashtags and uh description description information there we go because all this makes a huge difference when being seen the gist of everything though is really comes down to this control what you can and relax on what you can't control because people will come in you create good content you create exceptional moments people will come in if you don't you're going to drive people away. So I, I I do truly hope you got something from this. I know at times we're rambling, at times I'm freaking all over the place. It happens with me, you know, Roggle's not here to rein me in, but I hope you understand and I hope this helps you out. Focus on your analytics at the end of the week. Do not beat yourself up if you're not seeing overnight success because it's not going to happen that's not realistic that's not like that's not going to happen for you and or statistically that's not going to happen for you let me put it that way that just sound very negative about it. so for me i am if you watch anything i do you will see i'm very transparent with everything which is why these episodes are uh what's the best way to put this i don't want to say crucial because they're not they are type thing they're meant to be helpful and i'm wanting to show people and we're going to do several more episodes like this at least once a month so you guys can see if you're considering going on the streaming journey and you want to you know give it three months or two months or a month and you kind of see what i'm doing i'm going to give you that opportunity if you want to at least get a baseline that's what i'm hoping these things this these episodes do because everything's going to be a little different for everybody whether you're a main main game streamer you're a variety streamer or you're a multi-streamer and it's all it's all going to be drastically different if i were to give a piece of advice to anyone who's starting out i would highly suggest being a multi-streamer at first for the sole fact of if you do it for at least a month i would say at least three months realistic give yourself 90 days uh for best analytics but give yourself at least one month and that's when you can look at your channels and go, okay, kick. I'm not, I'm not growing at all. I gained one follower, get rid of it. Kick is not your main platform. 
Facebook's not your main platform. You're not growing or anything, but you're seeing, or maybe you are popping off on Facebook. You're not growing on Twitch. Cool. It gives you a chance to look at the metrics and understand what channel gives you the best opportunity to grow with your style of content creation. Uh, while other channels may not provide that. So something to consider. Um, the other piece of advice I would give, and I think every streamer has always given it, is in order to grow, again, I've said this numerous times during this, in order to grow, you have to grow everywhere. You can't just stay stuck. You can't just stay in one location and assume you're going to grow and have success. In other words, you can't just stay on Twitch and then go, or YouTube or Kick or Facebook and go, I'm going to grow if I just stay right here. No, not likely. You have to be seen everywhere. Not everyone on social media, not everyone uses one specific social media. We don't all just use Facebook. We don't all just use TikTok. We all don't use YouTube or Kick or Twitch or X or Instagram or Clapper or Threads. Everyone uses something different. So your best opportunity to just hit the big three, four, there we go, big four social medias um, and then hit the big three short contents so your social media should be like facebook instagram uh TikTok, and x slash twitter and then for your short content you should be posting up reels on instagram slash facebook you should be posting up youtube shorts over on youtube you should be posting up content over on TikTok and redirecting everyone to whatever main platform you're on and if you're a multi-streamer post wherever you want Meaning like redirect them to Facebook, redirect them to Kick, redirect them to YouTube, Twitch, wherever. You do what you got to do to redirect them, but do the research and make sure you're spread out everywhere. The wider you cast your net, the better chance you are to gather fish. That's a bad analogy, isn't it? Cast your net wide to catch the most viewers. Really what it's coming down to. Control the controllable and don't fret about the uncontrollables. You can control when you stream, how long you stream, what games you stream, and how you interact with your community and where you're posting and how much content you're posting. What you cannot control is who's watching your content, who's commenting on your content, who's tuning into your live streams, uh, who enjoys your content, who hates your content. You have no say in any of that. You can influence it, but you can't control it. And it's not worth getting pissed off and upset about and saying, oh, I'm just done. I don't want to do this anymore because I'm not growing after a month. It's not going to take a month. It's not going to take three months. It's going to take longer. If done properly, you should see growth month over month is the goal. You can do week over week, but don't do it on a daily basis because you will beat yourself up. You will feel like you're struggling and you're not being successful. At it. That's not the case. Uh, last piece of advice I would give, and we'll talk in another episode about this, is be prepared. You're going to have toxic people come in you're going to have negative trolls come in and you're going to just have terrible terrible people come in and say some hateful shit to you uh, because you don't play their way or they don't like your play style or they think you suck or whatever and if you don't believe me head over cyber Merc sig on youtube instagram tiktok anywhere and what look at my comments you will see some pretty nasty shit don't let it get to you they're just there and take it with stride and remember any interaction is good interaction so if they're harassing bullying yeah definitely report it but take it with a grain of salt don't let it get to you because that's part of being online is you're going to face the toxicity so i hope this helps i hope you get something from this uh we are changing up our two guys one game pad uh release schedule but more information on that soon and of course stay tuned and make sure you hit the follow regardless of where you're watching or listening to this podcast because coming real soon supposedly in may according to roggle roggle and lane have reached out and actually interviewed uh, some actual actors and some horror movies and specifically ones that are going to be part of a, an up-and-coming horror universe and it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun they put a lot of work into this and I'm excited to listen to these episodes. I haven't heard them. So stay tuned. Follow us on Two Guys One Game Pad everywhere. Um, come join us on Discord. Stay up to date with us on um, social media. But till next time, everyone, I will see you or 
we'll hang out on the next episode of two guys one game pad if you want to come watch the live streams just search cyber Merc sig links are listed down below in the description everywhere on facebook youtube twitch and kick and come have some fun rog and i play every thursday night and he's over on twitch so come hang out with us have some fun and see what we do outside of two guys one game pad but till then everyone take care stay safe and we'll see you or hang out with you on the next episode till then everyone take it easy